Hey guys, Chef Bolts here again. So today what we're going to be looking at is leavening agents. So we have lots of different leavening agents available to us. And depending upon what the recipe calls for and what's needed and what kind of chemical reactions we're looking for will depend upon which type of leavening agent we're going to actually look at. Let's take a look at the options we have. So we have a few different types of leavening agent that we can use in our armament, depending upon exactly what we want to do. So first we have things like egg whites. So egg whites, the albumin, the protein that's in those egg whites, is really good when you whip them up. They hold a fairly, fairly firm peak and they hold a lot of air in them as they're whipped up. Um, generally, um, not always, but uh, generally we'll also then add some kind of a strengthener to that to give it more structure, things like flour. Um, but if you're making things like meringues, then you may add a little cream of tartar that can actually help to uh, maintain the structure of them as well um, as an acid. Um, then we move on to things like chemical leavening agents. So chemical leavening agents, we've got two different ones in our repertoire. We have baking soda, we have baking powder. Uh, baking soda, uh, also sodium bicarbonate, um, is something which will create carbon dioxide bubbles when it's mixed with an acid. Um, so we have things like vinegar, we have again things like the cream of tartar, um, or it could be that you're mixing it in with something like chocolate that has a fairly high acidity. That high acidity will work with the baking soda to make it create that carbon dioxide to leaven, to, to make that food riot. If you don't have a high acidity, then you can use something like baking powder. Baking powder already has an acid added in there. Sometimes that may actually be um, the cream of tartar. And so just by adding water into a baking soda, that's where you get the effect where it creates carbon dioxide to leaven your product, to make the, make the carbon dioxide raise your product. So then we move on to also having yeasts. So uh, yeast is a biological um, leavening agent. And what yeast does, so it's, it's, it's a mold, it's a fungus, um, which will grow. And so this is a slower acting one, whereas our chemical leavening agents are very, very quick, um, almost instantaneous in their reaction. Uh, with yeast, it's going to take a little more time because we're physically growing the yeast. Um, this particular type of yeast that we have uh, is an instant dried yeast. Um, so we add that into a warm environment because it needs warmth, just like we like warmth. It needs food, so we give it something like sugar um, or starch to feed it. Um, and then it also needs water. Um, as well because it needs that moisture uh, to be able to start growing and as it grows um, it will actually create two different uh, byproducts one is alcohol and the other one um, is carbon dioxide and so again that's going to leaven our products so let's try a few of these out and see exactly how these work and the speed at which these work just give you kind of an idea as to how these operate first baking soda let's go ahead and get some of our vinegar that we're going to use as our acid to get the reaction. And so now we'll take some of baking soda and just rub it right in. As you can see, an instantaneous reaction. And now our baking powder just being dropped into some water. When it comes to our biological leavener, now we're looking at yeast. 
And so this yeast is a dry yeast. And so what we need to do is reactivate it. So I've got some hot water here. This water is right around 110 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's, it's very warm, but not boiling hot, because if you have it boiling hot, then it will kill the yeast. So I'm going to add a little food in for the yeast first. We want our yeast to be able to uh, enjoy something to eat, some warmth, and some moisture. Now that we have our environment set up for our yeast, we're actually going to do a little experiment. So from this side over here, this yeast was actually opened up about nine months ago. It's been stored in an airtight container for those nine months, but it has been open for a significant length of time. This yeast over here was just open today. They were both purchased at the same time, but one was kept, this one here, was actually kept inside its vacuum packed container, and the other has been open, but kept in a sealed container since. We're going to see just how dramatic of a difference we actually get when this yeast is aged a little. Let's see if it makes a big difference. I've now placed both of these yeast mixtures on the edge of the oven, just uh, with the pilot light on. It's just a nice warm environment. That yeast needs the food, the warmth, and the moisture to reactivate. And we're gonna see over time how much of a difference it makes between having the older yeast, which has been uh, open for a lot longer, nine months longer, and the new yeast, uh, which has just been opened just in the last day. So some important things to remember when we're looking at our leavening agents, whether you're looking at eggs and you need to make sure that they're super fresh, uh, whether you're looking at certain other types like baking uh, powder, which the baking powder just needs that moisture because it already has the acidity, or baking soda where you need to increase the acidity. And when it comes to yeast, making sure you're feeding it, make sure you're giving it the warmth and that you're giving it the moisture. And also, obviously, between these two, making sure that it's fresh. And that goes with any leavener that you have out there. Eggs, or any of the biological, or any of the chemical agents, you must make sure that they are fresh, because obviously, they start to slow their way down, and they won't work after a while. I hope this helps.